Baseload Energy here with a new presentation. Hopefully investors really enjoy what we have, but we're trying to emphasize Accio as the newest near-surface uranium discovery and what it really means, because I think that message is kind of lost on people. But what's the Athabasca 2.0 really about? We're focusing on mineable uranium deposits. Yes, we're looking for these high-grade MacArthur River or, or Arrows, bulk tonnage type of things near surface, but it's not always about grade or size. And that's what I want to get across here. The Athabasca is known for high grade. There's no doubt about that. You ask people what's Athabasca uranium, they say, oh, 1%, 10% uranium. It's not always the case. But why are there so few Athabasca uranium mines, especially within that basin? It's because they're deep. They're within a water porous and water saturated environment. And mining, mining those requires freezing, which leads to high capex and high operating costs and also increased operational risks. Whereas our Accio deposit is different. Our, our deposit follows a, a different convention that we're near surface. We've got competent rocks with no water issues. We're close to infrastructure. We have Accio has that open pit potential, which also means that there's low capex and opex potential. So very, very, very encouraging. But to further demonstrate the Athabasca 2.0 and ease of mineability, we're going to look at a couple of misconceptions. Because again, a lot of people consider that you need to have high grade and massive size, but that's not the case. When you look at just the Athabasca uranium mines throughout throughout the history of the area, 95% of Athabasca uranium mines have been easily accessible as open pits and or decline access. The 5% of that is MacArthur River and Cigar Lake. 75% of Athabasca uranium deposits with mineralization as shallow as 100 meters have been mined. That's a very significant statistic, which really emphasizes that if you can find something that is shallow, you have a much easier chance of putting it into production than something that is deeper than 100 meters and has water issues. So the potential to move an open pit deposit is much better in the Athabasca. When we look at size, 65% of Athabasca uranium deposits, and these are things with resources, with less than 10 million pounds have been mined. Less than 10 million pounds. And 65% of deposits with less than 10 million pounds have been mined. That's a staggering number. It points to the idea that you don't need 50 million pounds. You don't need 200 million pounds. Similarly, 60% of Athabasca uranium deposits with less than 1% average grade have been mined. So the majority of uranium deposits with less than 1% are the things that are turning into mines in the Athabasca. You don't need to necessarily have high grade or large tonnage. Our Accio uranium discovery is a unique amongst our peers because it really fits in with that Athabasca 2.0 strategy, that it's near surface uranium with, with mineralization starting 25 meters beneath the surface. You literally scrape off the till and you can start mining. It's just that easy. This is the shallowest Athabasca uranium discovery in over 40 years. The last time something like this was discovered, it became a mine. And when you look at the, the geometry of the mineralization on this section, it really favors a low strip ratio, which is beneficial for open pit extraction. Coupled with excellent infrastructure and proximity to roads and mills, with easy accessibility and inexpensive exploration, this makes for a very unique, unique discovery. Again, emphasizing on the near surface near-surface uranium deposits as being viable mines. 95% of the Athabasca uranium mines were open pits and added declined mines. Accio fits within there perfectly. That's what we're looking for. We don't want to just discover a deposit. We want to find a mine. We've got multiple near-surface uranium pods at Accio with negligible sandstone cover which means we've got no water issues, which means it, the geology is just that much simpler. Open pit potential also means that there's it, it's an easier mining environment. No matter where you go across the globe, open pits are always the easiest thing to mine than, than they are than underground mines. So with, with, with that being said, with that open pit potential, could mean that there's low capex and opex, but also it's very quick to develop. So 
in addition to being near surface, near surface means that you've got less capex involved, which could return high margins as well that you could mine direct or immediately from 25 meters beneath the surface. That's what creates the margins, high margins in these type of deposits. But we've also got high grade. Of course, we have to mention high grade because it is the Athabasca. And we see it in all of the deposits. Each of each of the pods that we have are cored with high grade, um, high grade material. And seeing high grade that shallow between 65 meters and 100 meters, especially with excellent excellent grades and over excellent widths really emphasizes the fact that the value of mineralization exists within Accio as well. As I updated, oh, we, we still have 40 drill holes pending from, still have 40 drill holes from the 2024 program pending assay results. Now to provide a very quick update on that, the lab is backlogged. It's taking them a long time to, to get to the assays because of the amount of assays they have. It's just patience is required. The assays will come. We need to get the results before we can release them. But the lab is taking an extremely long time, unfortunately. The other thing we want to point out is that mineralogy is amenable to milling. And that's you can have a deposit, but if you cannot extract the material from that deposit, what good is it really? So we want to prove that Accio can be milled, not only mined as an open pit, but we want to demonstrate that Accio can be milled. 98% of the uranium bearing mineral that we are finding at Accio is uraninite. It's so basically it's almost pure uraninite, and that's the one that's the mineral you want to find in this industry because it's so easy to extract uranium from it. We've got low sulfides, which means low potential for acid rock drainage. Awesome. Nobody wants acid rock drainage. And we've got very low toxic elements. Another big bonus. Nobody wants those. We've done some initial bench scale acid leach testing, and we've seen high recoveries. So with, with two simple scenarios, at anything above 0.3% U308, we've seen consistently 98% recovery uranium. Amazing. That's that's amazing. You basically throw the rocks in, you can expect almost 100% return. It does uh, the recovery does drop a little bit with lower grades at 0 0.05, we're seeing 92% recovery, but that really builds into the next bullet there about radiometric ore sorting where we have run some initial tests with that looking at this low grade potential using 0.05% cutoff grade and starting out with a 0.12% feed grade. We're seeing a 200% grade increase. With, with material that goes through the ore sorting process. So with those starting conditions, we're seeing 0.25% we're seeing U308 as an average grade being recovered. And that means a lot of the material went off to waste and we were able to, to beneficiate, beneficiate the mineralization. So we think this is a process that we can, we can apply to Accio that we can increase the amount of uranium that is recovered from the rocks that they don't necessarily go into tailings or be dis or be disregarded as waste they can actually be turned into they can be turned into ore they can be turned into something that is recoverable and the more the more uranium that can be recovered from a from a deposit ah absolutely much better Zakio is in the middle with that red and we see a lot of dis district scale opportunity. Summer drilling, we identified two new areas that are very encouraging. We're still waiting on assays from them. However, the TAB and the TT areas, both six kilometer to the northeast and five kilometer to the southwest respectively, they're very close. These will be our priority focus for 2025. And we think that there's, there's great potential for additional mineralization to be discovered in these areas. Now, if we can fall, if we can prove that these, that these are new uranium deposits on the horizon, then we can start building out a hub and spoke model of near surface, open pitable potential deposits within the Accio area, which really builds up the whole aerial play as it is to something that is more than just Accio. Now you've got multiple deposits and it just increases the whole beneficial, it benefits the whole area and makes it that much more lucrative. So this is, again, a big focus for us in 2025. So looking towards 2025, again, we're, we're still pending those 40 drill hole results. Unfortunately, it is taking a very long time. Uh, we're, we're trying to get things expedited so that we can have results, but I don't know how quick things can go on that end. Once we have all the results back, then we can start 
pinpointing and finalizing our drill programs. As I just mentioned, we're we're initially looking at tab and TT based on the based on what we've seen in the core, but we need the final assay results to really confirm that and, and make sure that we're going to put our exploration dollars into the right areas. We want to make that new discovery, we want to make the next discovery. Those are looking hot as they are, but we need to really prove that on our end and we need the assays to do that. We're looking into strategic partnerships on, on many different things. There are a lot of great ideas within the baseload camp and some of those I hope can come to light sooner rather than later. And as with the whole milling idea, we do plan to we do plan to do some additional mineral systems characterization tests just to really demonstrate that what we have is not only amenable to mining but also milling. Very important to have both of those. Right now, baseload, we believe, is the largest asymmetric opportunity in the uranium space. Our enterprise value fluctuates from anywhere from zero to two million dollars. It's it's unbelievable that there's such a disconnect between the share price and the value of what we have. Our share price is down about 80% since January. We're trading at all-time lows and well below the Accio discovery levels. But we've we've been very happy with the real results that we've seen. There's been no change in the business and we continue to see positive news flow from the drill programs and other developments. We are well funded with $10 million in cash to, to help us discover the next deposit within this whole Accio area. 133 million shares outstanding with 10 million in the bank. We don't see any need to go back to the market. No dilution. If we can make a new discovery next year with the cash in hand, then we can use that cash to further develop said discovery without diluting our current shareholders. And this is what represents the the investment opportunity as it is, is that right now we're at such a low value, our share price is at such a low value that new entries in, into the company this is the perfect time for that. This is the perfect time to for a new investor to get into the uranium space, get behind baseload. But it's also a, a, a unique opportunity and perfect time for current investors to average down. With everything I've just demonstrated with Accio and and its potential to be to be something more than a deposit that sits in the ground for decades and decades. We believe Accio is something unique and special and can move forward, and we can benefit our shareholders in the months and years to come. Our manage management and board remain the same. Baseload is still part of the org group of companies, an excellent group of companies that have a lot of serial success, and we're proud to to be the uranium side of the org group as, as we advance Accio and other discoveries. I have made some forward-looking statements, but please read at your own convenience, and please reach out. If you enjoyed this presentation, I do plan to do more to really emphasize Athabasca 2.0 and put it into more perspectives. There are there are a lot of things that, that people just need to be aware of, but yes, please email me, contact us, happy to, happy to talk to investors, and yeah, please keep watching for news coming down, pending assays, and additional... Additional presentations to really build on the story. Thanks for your time.